Tonight, the professional boxer warning of the dangers of so-called white-collar boxing after a first-time fighter died in Great Yarmouth. John Thaxton says much more needs to be done to protect the people who take part. Cuba Moptic was fighting in Great Yarmouth. It wasn't a fight covered by the kind of strict regulations which govern both professional and traditional amateur boxing. We're here in the views of the former European champion John Thaxton after this from Alex Dunlop. Boxers weigh in for a series of professional matches in Norwich. Tonight's bouts are fully licensed by boxing regulators, unlike the event in Great Yarmouth at the weekend. It led to the death of 22-year-old Kuba Mochik, a man his friends described as gentle and shy. Robert Hucek looked on him as a younger brother. Uppermost in Robert's mind, did Kuba get the right attention by the private ringside medics? They didn't know what to do exactly in the situation, so... The one of the, the fighters who trained with him in the same gym. So that he, guy knew more than the paramedics who came here as a first. Then after 20 minutes or half an hour later, that came proper ambulance. and So that was like 20 minutes on the, on the ring, on the floor. The tower complex on Great Yarmouth seafront was Kuba Moshik's first and last fight. The former factory worker was transferred to the James Paget Hospital, where he died on Wednesday night. His twin sister Magdalena and family were at his bedside. A close friend who didn't want to be identified watched the final bout. From what we could see, Kuba couldn't breathe, she told me. They tried to put a pipe into his throat, but he was physically sick. It took perhaps 20 minutes for them to put the pipe into his throat. At a dinner last night for the former world champion Tyson Fury, Kuba's former trainer says the event was properly managed. They couldn't have done any more than, than, than they done. This has nothing to do with being unlicensed boxing. The medical team was exactly the same team as anybody else would have been there. But um, as, as far as, as unlicensed boxing, before people jump on the bandwagon, this sort of thing happens in professional, happens in amateur. Professional boxing is regulated by the British Board of Control, while amateur boxing is also closely controlled. But the event in Yarmouth was unlicensed. Unlicensed boxing, or white collar boxing as it's also known, is perfectly legal. And the venue behind me is licensed to hold boxing events. But Great Yarmouth Borough Council say their officers will be investigating what happened on Saturday night as health and safety concerns had been raised. At this nearby hotel where Cuba had worked, friends need answers, but they also need to mourn. A very gentle man. Yes, he was a, always happy, always smiling, funny. He was a, was a nice boy, quiet, but was a really nice boy. Kuba Mochik's death could have been a freak accident, but it does open up a debate on whether unlicensed boxing needs to be more closely controlled. Alex Dunlop, BBC Look East, Great Yarmouth. So what is white-collar boxing? The trend started in New York in the 1990s. Men and women from white-collar professions train for a few weeks and then fight at special events. Most of them have little or no experience. Professional boxing comes under the control of the British Boxing Board of Control and has tight controls, and so too does amateur boxing. White-collar boxing appears to operate between the two. It's often unregulated and unlicensed, but is still legal. A few minutes ago, I went to see the former European champion, John Thaxton, and asked him what worries him most. Um, the medical issues. You know, we have initiatives and we have doctors at ringside, but also professional boxers. They have to have a, a full medical um, every year. MRI test, you know, for the brain, um, eye tests, and a, and a full, full, full medical. Um, so, yeah, boxing isn't the safest of sports. But the way the British Boxing Board Control do it, it makes it as safe as possible. And if they are worried, you're not allowed to box? No, no. If, if, we, if we get stopped, if we get cut, um, you get a 28-day suspension. And then you have to go, go before a doctor as well to get cleared, to get medically clear, cleared. And, and as far as the organisation of these white-colour fights as well, I mean, the, the officials would not be trained? I wouldn't have thought so. There might be. I, I, I can't comment on that. But there's no organisation to, you know, to govern that. And when you were fighting, I mean, a referee, how, how much training would a referee have? A referee, have? Well, when we're fighting, we have a trained referee. A referee had to do a course, you know, to, to get qualified. Same with amateur boxing. You have tra trained referees, trained judges, trained coaches, same as us. If we want to be a coach as a professional boxer, we just can't, we just don't turn up. We have to go on a, a two-day course to become a professional training coach.
And, and if you have a trained referee, mm. he will know when to stop the fight. He will look at the signs. A lot of, the, a lot of, a lot of referees, sometimes referees get, um, get criticised for stopping fights too, too soon. You know, and you know, we all, or, but it's better to be too soon than too late. Uh, and there will be young men, maybe some young women watching this, who are training for one of these fights. What would your advice to them be? My advice would be, you know, where are you fighting? You know, who's your coach? You, have you got a qualified coach, a, a trained, experienced coach who knows what they're doing? Not just throwing you in, you know. It, it all comes down to the coach, to, to, to the promotion and everything else. Is it run pro properly, safely, correctly? you know, with the right insurance in place. And if somebody is stepping into the ring, what should they be thinking about themselves? Are they fit and are they healthy? And if they're not? Don't fight. Don't fight. Just because you sold 50, 60, 70 tickets, whatever, you owe it to yourself, not the people you sold tickets to. John, thank you. Meanwhile, Anthony Agogo, who comes from Lowestoft, has had his licence suspended by the British Boxing Board of Control. It follows his first defeat as a professional last month when he was retired by his corner. It was later confirmed he'd broken an eye socket. The suspension is standard practice on medical grounds.